Hey, hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today I have something a little bit different for you guys, compared, you know, different from the Need for Speed, the RMDE, and some of the podcast content. I got an email recently from who I believe to be the FCA kind of Midwest region representative, Kelly Enright, inviting me to join a virtual meeting for their, well, for FCA and Uconnect's new system called Uconnect 5. It was going to be hosted by Jen Palmer and Vince Galanti. Unfortunately, Jen couldn't make it, but Vince did. Obviously, I went and got some footage. And what's coming up now is a kind of a shortened version of events of what happened and the meeting. I'm, gonna, I'm also going to upload just the entire thing unedited if you guys are interested in that. But yes, the upcoming video is just a kind of to the point what happened, some of the more interesting things, so on and so forth. So I'll see you all at the end of the video where I'll talk more on my thoughts about the meeting and Uconnect 5. Enjoy. Hi there. Hey, Aaron. Okay, so. Oh, your mic's not working, Aaron. Not yet, Aaron. SD. I keep What's wanting up, man? I heard you had a really terrible golf game. <laughs> oh, you're on mute, so I can't. You can't defend yourself. Yeah, I heard you scored like a buck thirty or something like that on a brand new course without any trees or water. Turn to my mic. I will respond to these accusations that are incorrect. <laughs> Very incorrect accusations going on over here. So Jim actually was up in Michigan recently, and we were going to hang out and spend time, but we just could not find any timeline that would work. Yeah, that was important. Yeah, and uh, the bummer part was like, dude, there's a Starbucks in the way. I know it's open because things are just closed. And he's all, oh, well, my flight's at 4.30. I'm like, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, oh, you can't travel because of COVID. No, you can't travel. There's no damn flight. There's two flights at Detroit, one at 7 a.m. and one at 4 a.m. Did you even, did you even Tim. go to bed? That's it. Tim, I thought you were big enough now you had your own private jet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 Denver to Dulles and Dulles to Detroit. On the way back, they wanted to go Detroit to Chicago, Chicago to Dulles, and Dulles to Detroit, Denver. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> so I, I got rerouted to Chicago. I sat in the United Club for like six hours. Oh, rah, rah. Yeah, that was like, yeah. I can't imagine the amount of drama me and I'd need. I'd just be passed out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> would, would, good deal. <laughs> it, was a, it was a surreal experience, I'll tell you that. It was very different. Um, I got upgraded first class in a way. I was great. I'm going to get comments on that. But, uh, <laughs> you I got upgraded yourself. in a way. I'm uh, Vince Galante. I'm the chief designer for our user experience team uh, working in the design office. We talk about um, technology and products. It's really, it starts with the customers. And with the new, uh, with all the connectivity that's coming, what really allows us to do is align to their di digital lifestyle um, and, and give them the choices um, to connect to those things that, the, that they use the most. And, and we'll show you a few examples of that today. So I, I mentioned it's all about the customers. So we do, uh, we do, do a lot of uh, user testing, a lot of benchmarking, a lot of research. And, and so we, we, we really have a good handle on what our, what our customers are, are looking for. And they, you know, just to, to, I know the designer sh showing you guys numbers, but 51% um, of our customers tell us that uh, technology will in influence the purchase, uh, their purchase of a vehicle and which car they choose. I think uh, even more so than that, 64% tell us that the in-vehicle technology will drive loyalty to their next purchase. Uh, so if you don't get it right the first time, it, it, it means they're not, they're not going to come back. And then. Uh, the closest number to my heart, 78% uh, said simple to use infotainment is is very is, is important to them in their vehicle purchase, and, and I'll show you all all the ways uh, that you connect five that we, we really we really uh, we really built that in. Uh, we ta I talked about a little bit about keeping the vehicle, um, you know, improving the quality and keeping the vehicle up to date, and data analytics and insights uh, that we get from real time data. Uh, are really going to allow us to do that to understand, you know, not just uh, what's what's working right for the customer, but what features they're using, how often they're using them. It, it's it's a really, it, it's it's basically like a live uh, 
user uh, test for us, and it'll really give us good insight into making sure that we're we're giving them the things that they they need and desire in the future. And then uh, the last piece here is that just an, an, it will enable future technologies like automated driving and like what I'll, uh, what I'll show you on um, you know better voice solutions, more interactive map solutions, and I'll show you some of those today. If you need any more proof, I think this this is a really good example. Uh, on the on the left side is the the 2009 Ram, and keep in mind when that came out, uh, it was it was top of, top of its class. It was you know very very highly regarded. Uh, for its design and its in its technology in the, in in the truck segment there, and just 10 years later, this is our 2019 Ram that we we showed last year with the with the 12 inch display there in the middle, and you can see what a leap uh, what a leap that is in just 10 years. And I love this example because uh, it has been you know historically the truck market is is traditional, and if you can see this kind of change happening here and that that customer desire. For that technology here, I, I think it, it really it really drives home how important connectivity really is, uh, and so not just uh, connectivity, but mobility, um, vehicles, shared experiences, electrification, and autonomy. These these are really big topics that that are that are coming up over and over again today uh, in the industry, and they really are changing the way that we we think about and the way that we design our vehicles, and so I, I think to to kind of to, to show you guys some tangible examples of, of how we're how we're taking this knowledge, we're going to go through uh, you know our, our new UConnect Five system. So I think when we, we want to talk about some some examples of how you know I mentioned we're taking this seriously and 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 you know kind of proof is in the pudding and we wanted to show you guys uh, our all our all new UConnect Five system and we're really proud of the UConnect system and the feedback that we do get from our customers on it. And so if you look here on the far left is UConnect 1 and on the far right is UConnect 5, you'll notice this, this progression. Uh, so when we did UConnect 5, we, we didn't just throw away what we had. We knew we had a really, we had something really great to build off of. And so uh, what you're gonna see today is that we, how we made it more powerful, how we've integrated it more elegantly, uh, the design of it into the interiors and, and how we've you know given it new features and new technology, but we've made it even easier to use. So we talk about more powerful. I think the first thing is it's actually five times more powerful, and that's the computer that's that's behind the scenes that's powering this thing. And it's something that you're gonna you're gonna feel uh, when you use the system how responsive it is. Uh, it has a, an Android operating system built into it, and I'll talk a little bit more about that on the next page. Uh, you're gonna see uh, three times today's resolution, denser resolution on the screen. You're also gonna see larger screens uh, as as we move. Uh, as we move uh, forward. And then every vehicle with Uconnect 5 will be connected uh, via 4G. So we talked about Android and, and how powerful that is. It, you know, it was really, it's a really great foundation for us to build off of. It's a very well established um, operating system uh, platform to start with. And in addition to that, it's also the most widely developed platform uh, in the world. And so, it really opens the door for new features and, and new, new uh, services to come into the vehicle. And by having Android as our operating system, as those new things come out and as customer preferences change, it'll just allow us to bring that stuff in faster and easier right into the system. Uh, we also built Uconnect 5 to be flexible across all of our brands and all of our vehicle platforms. And I think, um, you know, I think when you first see this, it's, you know, it, to make it work across all of you know to, to work across all of them it's going to be generic but one of the really special things about um, and one of the things i enjoy the most about working at fca is just how unique each one of our brands is and how unique each one of the vehicles within those brands and their purpose is. and so not only will the system work across all of those brands but it'll also be able to highlight fe uh, features and attributes of each of those vehicles that, are, that to really make them stand out so um, it's really important to us that all of our brands are very distinct and have a really unique personality. So we talk about the design of it, and, and I mentioned that we took today's system and made it even more elegantly designed. Uh, on the left there is, is Uconnect 4. That's what we, is on the road today. And there's a lot more three-dimensional buttons, more complex backgrounds in there. And, and when we went forward to work on Uconnect 5, you know, we looked at, we looked at the trends in the consumer electronics industry and other places. And you know, we really wanted to go after this uh, cleaner, uh, more layered design. And so, what you'll see on the right with Uconnect Five, I think immediately you'll notice is a is a much cleaner appearance. We're using really simple backgrounds, 
solid colors, outlines around the buttons, simple gradients, things like that. Um, and you know, in addition to looking cleaner and being easier to read and, and more modern, being able to, to make those things in solid colors and outlines, you can, you can do that with computer code rather than individual images for each button. And so that'll allow the system to load up faster and actually um, help it be even more responsive. So in addition to being five times more powerful, we actually designed it in such a way that the system would be able to uh, react with, with uh, faster as well. I mentioned that uh, the system will work across uh, multiple different types of vehicles. And so when we built the system, we made it responsive uh, to cover a bunch of, uh, a few different layouts. So you'll see portrait here, uh, standard, or square, and landscape. And so as, as we're designing new vehicles, we will be able to pick the, pick the layout that best suits that interior and best suits the, the package of that vehicle and its purpose. So when we're talking about balancing the amount of um, hard controls like volume knobs or browse knobs versus the size of the screen, or if we're dealing with something like a truck that has a very tall uh, instrument panel versus something like a sedan that has a very short instrument panel, we have the flexibility to integrate the technology in, in the best way possible. Again, uh, in addition to highlighting uh, things about the individual brands that, that are special. We've also given each brand a unique look and feel. And so uh, you'll see, if, uh, this isn't all of them, but this is a selection of them. Uh, and so you'll see different backgrounds, unique textures, button shapes, accent colors. And, you know, you'll, you'll see those flow harmoniously with the interior. And, you know, because our color materials team really pays close attention uh, to create that special environment through the textures, the materials, the color of the stitching, and we really, uh, the, the technology in the car and what's on the screen is no different. And we really, we paid close attention to make sure that it, it lived within that environment. So I, I mentioned that, uh, you know, we did take inspiration from consumer electronics and things that people are, are used to using every day. But when you're designing an interface for an automobile, it is a bit different. I mean, you are driving and we got to make sure that, you know, you can, you can do things uh, quickly and efficiently and you can keep your eyes on the road and so uh, these are just a couple ways that we make it really really easy to to read and to understand and we do the but the first thing we do is we add depth and hierarchy to to the items on the screen so if something's really important and it's something we think you're going to use all the time we've made that bigger and brighter and that helps it stand out and bring it to the surface if there are those things that maybe you use less often or that don't move around on the screen we've made them a little bit darker and pushed them to the back and what that really does is when you look at the screen, you know exactly where your finger's going. You can see it right away. You can activate it. You can get your eyes right back on the road. Uh, in addition to that, we've also made the text on the screen, the font. We've designed a special font for Uconnect 5 uh, to make it even more legible and even easier to read. Um, and, and the way we did that is there's a little bit more spacing in between the letters. If you have something like an S or a 5 or an 8, we put a little bit more space in the in the middle of those letters. So really, again, in just we, we want people when they look at that screen to see what they're looking for, be able to read what they're looking for, and do it quickly. And then the last piece of it uh, is consistency. And so as you'll see in here, as you go from app to app uh, down there on, on the menu on the bottom row, like the media or climate or um, phone, things are laid out in a, in, a, in a, the same fashion. Uh, from app to app, so you're not you're not relearning the layout, you're not searching for things. It's it's really you know the system, you know where to go, uh, and it's really easy to identify. Uh, another thing that, that it's really um, fun about working at FCA is I mentioned we have a lot of different brands and a lot of different types of vehicles, and that what, what comes with that is a lot of different types of customers. And some people like to uh, just get in the car and go, and they want it to be easy to use and simple. And then we have other people that say, hey, I want to I want to make this my own and I'm gonna dig in a little bit and I'm gonna customize it and I'm gonna do things uh, you know, a little bit differently. And so we, we took that into consider, consideration as we were building it and I'll, and I'll show a few examples of that. So when we talk about the, the, the architecture of the system itself, I mentioned that we've taken uh, today's system and we've, we've, we've improved it and enhanced it and made it better, but we didn't throw it away. And so the first thing you'll notice is uh, the category selection off, across the bottom. That is, that's the same like we have today. That's something that makes it super easy to jump from function to function. Uh, we've actually taken it a, a step further with Uconnect 5 and we've made it easier uh, to access, you know, vehicle specific things like Jeep off-road pages. You'll see there the, the little um, Jeep at the bottom of the screen. 
you can now, rather than having to dig through the after and find it, that'll be right there on the surface. Our status bar, uh, we've taken uh, what we have today and now we've made it interactive. So you'll see what's on the screen is that the temperature controls. Uh, so we've given you first surface access to those. So imagine you're navigating somewhere uh, and you wanna turn on the cooled seat. You can simply touch that button, turn on the cooled seat and you'll go right back to navigation having never left that app at all. So really just really quick access um, to get that function done. And then the, the last piece, this is most different of the system, through the middle is where the app content will live. And this is where I mentioned the, the, the layouts will be familiar from app to app. But you can, you can see here, um, we've made it really easy to navigate once you're in that app. So you can actually swipe back and forth between those different subcategories. Um, and what, which is really nice because not, not only is it, it, it feel, it look and feel and give you the impression of how fast and powerful the system is, but you can actually swipe between these things without ever looking at the screen. So as you learn the system, and as say you wanna go from all sources here to now playing, you can simply just reach over, grab anywhere on the screen and pull, and it'll swipe to the next one, and then you can look. So it essentially takes away a press and keeps your eyes on the road. We've also, uh, so in the media section, we've enhanced the, the presets. So you can now mix and match um, different sources within the, the preset bar there. So you see here, FM, AM, and SXM. So you can access this all from one place, you can also cycle through those uh, using the steering wheel control. Uh, on the RAM with the, the 12 inch, we did uh, launch with Sirius XM 360L. With all Uconnect 5 systems, you'll, you'll have this available. And so what that'll do is it'll um, really pump up your, your music section with 200 plus channels, uh, give you that seamless music experience from the, from the mobile app right to the car. It'll give you personalized recommendations. Uh, and then it'll also give you live satellite music or on-demand streaming. Uh, when we get to the phone section, we've also uh, improved that. So you can now over Bluetooth connect two phones simultaneously and quickly toggle between them. You can see that where it says Moto Z Force there at the bottom, just a simple press to, to go from one phone to the next. And then uh, a feature we're really excited about, uh, if you're somebody that likes to use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you can now do that wirelessly, uh, you know, without your phone ever having to leave your pocket. And I would mention, you'll still see there uh, kind of our menu bar and uh, that status bar across the top, the top and bottom. And, you know, we really get a lot of feedback from our customers that, you know, that like Apple CarPlay, that still want to use some of those vehicle functions. They want to make sure that that's seamless and that's easy without having to, to you know, a lot of steps. So we leave that at the bottom to allow them to, to really um, cycle between those things really easily. And then again, like the temperature pop-up I showed a few slides back, you'll be able to do that same thing right over Apple CarPlay. So really nice um, uh, blending, uh, seamless blending between the two systems. Our maps are all new. Uh, we're getting those from TomTom. Tom. Uh, so you'll get some uh, additional views. You'll get uh, enhanced searching with text prediction. Uh, you'll get faster route calculation, uh, real-time traffic updates, fuel prices, speed camera alerts, uh, weather updates, uh, you know, all, all of those all of those great things that come with connectivity. We've also uh, integrated Amazon Alexa. Uh, so this is something we have today uh, in our app drawer. What, I, what we have for you, what we've done for you Connect 5 is integrate it throughout the entire system. So in addition to, uh, you know, some of the, the home to car or car to home things you can do, like uh, start my car, open my garage door, you can also do things like ask Alexa to play fun music and it'll open up right in the music section within Uconnect 5 or take me, take me to Kroger and it'll open up right in the navigation. So it's fully integrated um, into the system, uh, the new Connect 5. If you don't have a connection, if you're in an area that, that you just, you're not getting service, uh, we've also upgraded the embedded voice system. So uh, it, this will also support nat natural language. As I mentioned, it will require no connection. It will also be integrated with the navigation system. So you can do that same thing. Uh, with natural natural language to ask for say to take me to somerset mall uh, and on top of that we've improved the microphone technology so the car will hear you uh, even clearer so we, we talked about uh, the ways that we've you know how much more powerful you connect five is we've talked about all the ways we've made it easier to use and i think the last piece i want to touch on is the personalization that was something that came up over and over and over again with our customers is they want this ability to customize uh, their interface and so the foundational piece of that is a user profile. So with Uconnect 5, you'll be able to have five individual user profiles plus the valet, so six total. And this is what's going to save all of, all of your preferences that you've built into the car, your, your radio presets, 
uh, your memory seats, the, any customization that I'm going to show you, that'll all get saved with your user profile. So if you, once you have your car set up, let's say you lend it to a friend and they mess up all of your settings, you're one press away from getting it back to just the way you like it. So mention that we, we, you guys saw previously the, the temperature button in the upper left, uh, uh, the interactive status bar. We've also uh, given the ability to customize uh, those buttons there across the top. So on this screen, you'll have four. There's three there in the upper left and the voice button in the upper right. And what this will do is give you first surface access to things that you like to use the most. So the example that's being shown here is the Wi-Fi hotspot. If you press that button, it'll be a quick launch right to the Wi-Fi hotspot. Another good example, if you're someone that say likes to tow, you can you can drag and drop the camera icon up there. And it'll give you first sur surface access to your cameras. And that doesn't matter where you are on the system. If you're uh, any any app within the system, Apple uh, Apple CarPlay, you can get to that function right away for surface one touch. Uh, with the Android operating system, we know that there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff coming in the future. And so we wanted to make sure that the, the app drawer was really organized and it was really easy to find those things that, uh, that you brought in. So a couple ways we've done that is by color coding. So the things that uh, are native to the vehicle, those will have the color outline. Those apps that you've brought in will have the, the, the filled background. In addition to that, we've also given customers the ability to filter the, that information. So you'll see that across the top. And again, those are those are the subcategories you can swipe through. Uh, and then lastly, if you're somebody like me, I have maybe four or five apps that I like to use the most. What I'll do is press that star on the upper right of the app icon there, and that'll and then my four or five apps will be in the favorite section. So all I have to do is go straight to that favorite section, and all the things I like to use the most are right there at the top. No, never have to search and dig for them; they will always be there. And then the last piece I want to touch on, and it, it's my favorite part um, of the system and, and happens to be the, the newest, is the home screen. And I, I think other companies, you've seen home screens out there, there's other vehicles that have it, but where ours is different is it'll allow the customer to build their own custom interface. And so you'll have multiple layouts to choose from and uh, what we call widgets, uh, these, those are those cards on the screen. Uh, you can customize and pick the things that you use the most. For, so for, for instance, for me, uh, I had a prototype unit. On the first page, I had navigation and I had the media section. On the second page, I had my phone favorites and I had a second card full of what we call shortcuts. And what shortcuts will do is give you six open buttons to um, mix and match the content that you like to use the most. So I had like call my wife, navigate to work, heated steering wheel, uh, launch Apple CarPlay, all in the same card. And so. Uh, and, and I should mention, you can also, you can create, I had two, but you can create up to five custom pages. And so uh, we talk about user testing. Uh, I remember bringing this this home and I, my, my mom happened to be in town that day. So I, my mom tested it. She tried it out. My wife tried it out. And I even had my kids try it out. And my, my daughter, who's six, uh, with no instruction, was able to build her own homepage in 30 seconds. Um, and so we, we, we thought that was a that was a pretty successful uh, user test. And so, you know, if I were to leave you with anything on, on this home screen, it's, you know, when we talk about Uconnect 5, one of our goals is always to get you to that feature or function that you want to use within two presses or less. When we set out to design the home screen, the kind of the challenge we gave ourselves, like what would that app look like that would allow you to, to get there in one? And so I think uh, the home screen here will, will really allow you to do that and be um, a really great, uh, really great, easy to use place where people uh, can put all of their favorite, all of their favorite features and functions. And so you're probably wondering, when do I get to see this? Uh, when am I going to see this in a car? Uh, so later this year on the model year um, 21 Pacifica, uh, you'll get to see all the, all these great features and you connect five uh, for the first time. So uh, we can roll through some of the questions. If you guys got a question, just write, just put a letter Q in the in the uh, chat box, and I'll identify your name with the fact that you want to talk. Somebody asked, why did we uh, go from UConnect four to UConnect five? Why did we jump that? Um, I don't know if we answered your question um, with that one screen where you got to see, you know, the first iteration of it all the way through the new one. But uh, you, you can answer that, Vince. Yeah, I, I think as you guys, the the space moves really fast and. Uh, customers, I mean, they, they, they expect, they expect this. I mean, they, they see it every day. They expect to see it moving fast and they expect these new things coming 
all the time. And, and so uh, it's really important to us to make sure that we're, we're delivering on that. And, and so um, it is a natural progression. We, continue, we will continue. I think I get the question that a lot, like how long does it take you guys to design Uconnect 5? It's, it's, it's really difficult to answer because we, we, we really never stop. We just keep making it better and better and, uh, over time. So. so this next generation was a big difference. This is a good segue into Tim's question, which is, uh, uh, are there hardware changes going along with the software changes to you guys? Yes, so uh, it, 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 there are hardware changes. Um, the actual, the, that, the unit I was, when I say it's five times faster, it is a faster, um, more powerful computer that's, that's running it. And, and then the displays that you'll see are higher resolution and larger. Oh, and then, and then there, there are, um, I think we get the question a lot about, um, can, can I just take my car, buy Uconnect 5 and, and, there, there, and put it in uh, to my car that has Uconnect 4? And the answer is no. Uh, there, you know, with that personalization, with some of the things I talked about, there are bigger effects to, to the vehicle and it touches more of, more of those uh, components in the car. So it is a fully integrated um, system. A similar comparison would be you can't put iPhone 10 software into your iPhone 5. You know, it's the same kind of thing. Plus, we have a lot of things that we have to integrate to the system in the future, uh, make room for autonomy and some other things, more connectivity, more services that the old system, just the old platform just could not do. It wasn't a big enough truck bed. So Andrew wants to know, what's the purpose of having two phones connected at once? Do I just need to make more friends? How many phones do you have, Vince? Do you have a work phone and a, and a I have two. Yeah, phone? I have a work. I have. I'm the weirdo that has an Android phone and an Apple phone. I have one of each. Yeah. Um, and, and Kelly, Kelly, do you have a private phone and a company phone? Oh, I turned my mute off. Yes, but both of mine are iPhone. Uh, two different variations, though. So I'm toggling Ooh. back and forth all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Andrew, your question is valid, and I I only have one phone that the company gives me, but. Uh, unlike Vince and Kelly, I don't have things I need to hide from the company that they must be doing. <laughs> <laughs> I have three kids, Nick. I have three kids. <laughs> that, there's a lot to hide. You know? <laughs> so I don't. But uh, that's that's. But there could be issue, uh, situ other situations where you have uh, two different people who travel often together, and they want to be able to contact, you know, whether or connect. Or use this. Uh, Vince, do you have any other examples? Do you have any other example of why you need to be able to connect two phones? What were the, what was the consumer I mean, I think, input to that? I mean, imagine, I'm, I, I know like if I, if I only had one phone, I mean, imagine um, you're on a road trip. I can connect my phone and my wife's phone now at the same time. Uh, and that's happened to us before. Uh, we've, we've, you know, we, we've, we need to use one or the other. So you can, you can easily switch between them. But we wanted to give that flexibility. I think that was the main. Over who gets to stream the music is what you're saying. Yeah, you, yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can stream music from one, and I can get yelled at for my Pandora station sucks. Switch to hers, and <laughs> Cody, that's a good question. The first time I've gotten that one is the TBM module, one of those things that you know, FC adopted from a collaboration with Waymo. Actually, we've been using TBM uh, boxes for quite a while. Whenever we develop new vehicles and a brand new car, uh, that we have a, what's called a fast feedback program, and. And there's a, a select group of people in the company who can choose to get one of these all new, very early iteration vehicles. And they have a live connection so that they can view what's happening with it real time. Um, not all consumers are ready for that, but they are beginning more, you know, adapt to it or and accepting the fact that there is um, some viewing of what the vehicle is going. I think um, there's other companies that have done a lot more as far as what kind of data they control and such. So it's become something that we now are just integrating into all the vehicles and everything that gets you connected by. Uh, Mary, uh, when will we see it on the Ram Jeep model years? Uh, you know what, uh, Vince, go ahead and just give her the whole product plan and don't forget to talk about the yeah. flying Grand Cherokee while you're at it, because that's my favorite, the flying SRT Grand Cherokee. <laughs> so, so Mary, we're gonna have a lot in the future, a lot we're gonna roll out and as, as vehicles change up and new platforms come online because this does have another uh, electrical architecture called Atlantis. So as vehicles change the platform, significant changes to the platform, that's when we'll upgrade to Uconnect 5 on them. So we will still be launching some new vehicles this year um, that are going to exist on the, uh, the current platform. It won't get Uconnect 5, they'll still be staying with Uconnect 4. But the ones that have some significant changes, like the Pacifica for 2021, uh, which is the first vehicle to get it, those will. There's a number of vehicles that we should have shown by now, but due to some of the auto shows, there's going to be some changes. So. 
You'll hear about that pretty darn soon. Uh, Chuck, let's see what you got here. 51% cited technology influences a role in their next vehicle purchase. Did that include safety tech or just infotainment? I don't know the answer to that. I'll have to go and chase that one down. I would assume it was just the, it was the um, technology itself. And so, you know. Yeah, I, I would say it, it includes uh, both. I, I think when we when we look at um, infotainment and safety tech, and when I when I talk about user experience, uh, we get the question a lot about um, you know what are you guys doing for electrification? What are you doing for autonomy? I think my my role in it is to make sure that number one, whatever we put in the car is easy to use, and, and number two that um, you know that's the direct line of communication with the customer. And that's how you're going to build trust with those tech, those systems. And so when we're looking for information about, I, I mean, we're looking at all of it. Um, so I, I, I don't really separate those two for, for my role. Um, but when, when we look at um, technology itself, it's, it's all those things that we, we mentioned. And Chuck, if you want more detail on that third party data that we actually grabbed that from another company, um, an analyst company, we can probably get that for you. You can chase it down through Kelly and I'll do it for you. Your other question was, uh, why do we favor touchscreen interface instead of central physical control knob button cluster? Oh, contraire. Vince, can you answer that? Yeah. I, I, so what, what, you, what you guys said, saw today was very focused on Uconnect 5, but as I mentioned, you, know, you, you guys saw the slide where the screens were changing orientations and shapes. I, it, it really, did, when, we, when we go out to design a vehicle, we're looking at the screen and we're looking at the controls that are right for that car. Um, so when, when we talk about something like a RAM, you see the big knobs in there, you see a lot of HVAC controls, you see physical knobs for, um, for aux and temperature and, and, and the, the towing uh, specific items. So it's really on a, it's on a case by case basis, but we are always balancing screen versus uh, number of controls. I mean, I think you, you didn't, I didn't show them in the presentation today, but like people, we ask about volume knobs and browse knobs all the time. Those will be there. We, we, it is very important to have that balance. Yeah, I have the redundant systems, right? But yes. As you try to search and, and get to that blind use on a touch screen, which some people do, obviously your daughter does, but uh, yeah. I'm not quite there yet. Yeah. Uh, so Ian, uh, you want to know with the, the lightning speed basically of new software, software architecture and you're interested in more frequent updates and cycles. Um, so I guess what you're asking is, is there's just going to be constantly change. You see the changes to the system increasing more than they did in the past. Meaning when we launched Uconnect 1, there probably wasn't much done to it for like a year. Whereas now, then We never stop. Yeah, I mean, we, we will, I mean, that that's that's the, you know, that that's that's par for the course now. I think it, we, we just will never stop um, and we continue to make it better and we'll continue to introduce new things. And I think in this space, uh, that's really the way of the world now. So, to what our customers want. Don't know what he said. There's a couple uh, updates that I'll be talking about on this system over the next six months. Uh, it's not, there's not like this break where we're not going to hear about an all new system again. It's going to be these continuing updates and, and improvements. And the, the Android operating system helps us out a lot there, as well as the speed of the processor. Yeah. Um, and are there discussions? Uh, oh, I'm oh, sorry, Cody, I skipped you on there. What other operating systems did you look at when making Uconnect 5? Were you always going to use Android-based systems? That's another good question. You know, this is so interesting because I, I, I feel old, Cody, when you ask questions like that. You made me just like, I, I, one of the examples I give is somebody asked me what kind of phone I have. I couldn't tell you. I know it's an Android only because Ben's told me that, but I honestly <laughs> couldn't tell you it was a 6, a 5, a 2. I don't know. <laughs> I know it's a Samsung and it works and that's all it is, but I could stand in a crowd and probably get shamed for not knowing these things. And we, we talk about this and naming the numbers and such, and will you connect five be one of those things that people are going, oh, you got to get you connect five system in there. But we've heard from other people that it's just about the tech as long as it's got it. So Vince, did we consider anything else? Uh, it was, it was always um, Android. Um, and, and the reason for that is when we, you know, I mentioned the example of the, the visual design where, you know, you can describe the buttons and code and it helps the system be faster. We showed the example of the screen changing size. Those are some fundamental elements that we had to make decisions on up front to make sure that um, in the end, you know, that it, that it would work across all the platforms, that it would respond and it would be fast. So I, I think uh, we, we, we knew. All right, thanks. Uh, this is Tim Astor. I'll just whoop my ass here. Thank you for that.
Um, the upgraded alternators for more amps. It's funny you talk about that because I know that my first vehicle was an old Ford Ranger, and I knew that when I killed the alternator going through the mud pits and such or whatever that I probably had about a week before I had to clean that thing out because there was nothing that ran off of a car battery. So it would take me about a week of starting it, run the headlights, whatever else, before the engine started starting like brrr, brrr, before I had to do something and clean out the or wash it out. Today's car, like a full-size Ram 1500, will kill the battery at highway speeds in less than 15 minutes. So you're right. And we have to like manage that and be able to make sure we have a lot more power. The alternators are there. The new e-torque system actually uses that 48 volt battery to run some of those systems at highway speed so the alternator is not dragging it down. But yeah, absolutely. It, it's along with everything else. Can you imagine, you know, cars of the yesteryear didn't have heated seats, heated steering wheels, the Wi-Fi systems, five or six different computers. The, the fuel pump alone has a huge draw. So um, yes, absolutely part of it. Uh, Lauren comes in, can you change the size of the icons bouncing on a dirt road? Sometimes I accidentally hit the wrong button. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um we not live. Um, I think that's where when we talk about some of the benefits of connectivity uh, and, and getting some of that 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 live data and even through the user tests um, that we do, if if we find that there's an icon somewhere that people are having trouble with, we can change that and and update it. Um, I would say like as we go to bigger screens, Nick and I talk about this all the time. Everybody's like bigger screens. That just means more stuff, more distraction. Actually it actually allows us to put more space in between things. And so when we put more space in between things, you can't always see it on the screen, but the, the area that you can touch will actually grow. And so we do actually take that into consideration. We do a lot of um, driving tests, um, you know, around here uh, in Michigan where the roads are fantastic um, and, <laughs> and, and make sure that we can, uh, and make sure that you can operate at that. So uh, I would say we, we, we Take that into consideration as we're designing the system but in the future if there are some areas that we find that are that are problem areas let's say we can update those and and send them to the cars okay can i uh, can i talk can you hear me yeah yep okay <laughs> so um can i just say make sure that on uh from the factory that the sos button is not near any arrows or anything <laughs> That's the one that I keep okay. accidentally pressing. Okay. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Where is the SOS button on the Uconnect 5, Vince? There's one in the uh, there's one in the app drawer. There's one in the phone section. And I think some of the cars will even have a hard button. Up on the mirrors? Yep. Right on. Okay. Okay, that's good. Well, thanks, you guys. If anybody else got any other questions, um, you can type them in now or we'll get to you another time. Oh, oh, Cody jumped in. Okay. Which screen orientation is seen as more luxurious and which is seen as more sporty? You know, I'm, I'm feeling embarrassed that I could probably answer this after hearing you so many times. Vince, but go ahead, buddy. <laughs> so there's, um, again, it depends on, it, it starts with the vehicle package and kind of that interior environment. I think generally speaking, if you look... Um, across the industry it's going to be the it'll be the landscape ones that are the more um that th those would be in, in more of the premium cars but again I, I think if you know a counterpoint to that um would be uh the ram uh we put a we put a portrait display in that um because that's what was right for that interior and and it has an extremely um luxurious appearance so it yeah, really depends talk about, on the vehicle talk about the space too that you have to work with yeah i mean i think if you we we'll, you know, if if you look at say the top of that center console where the shifter is to the top of the instrument panel, that's the space that we live in, right? Uh, on a RAM, it's very tall, so that that allows us to put that portrait screen in there and and flank the sides with the, those hard controls we talked about. Now, if you had something like a sedan, that space is much shorter. So if we want to make sure we still balance those hard controls in there, we use the shorter, wider screen. So that that's a it, it really depends on the vehicle, but I think in general. Most of the um, uh, the premium uh, cars, you'll see the you'll see the the landscape. And the fact that we now have the Android operating systems gives you all of those different options yeah. for screen sizes, right? Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. We can just whichever one's best for the car. Uh, it's it's a it's a menu. Mm -hmm. Great. Jesus, that's a lot. I'm sorry, I've been quiet. I'm, I'm trying to listen, but uh, yeah, that's crazy. Fifteen minutes. 
15 minutes for that? Holy crap, that's fast. That's crazy. So we got an answer. So we got an answer for the earlier one about the operating system. So if you're wondering, they never they never looked for anything. I mean, I'm, it's on video, but they always were they were always going to go to an Android based system. So we got an answer to that, and then we got an answer to will it be possible for owners of older FCA vehicles to to go back? And the short answer is no. Uh, the short answer is no. They're talking about autonomy and whatever, and I kind of wanted to know that. So if you have a Gen Five Viper or a Chrysler Two Hundred or a Dodge Dart, you're out of luck there, unfortunately. But yeah, sorry I've been quiet. I've just been listening. I've just been trying to listen. I, I forgot. Oh, hey, I'm muted, but I'm not muted on uh, OBS, so I could talk. And I should talk. So what did I think of the meeting then, huh? Well, it only lasted for an hour, so it was actually kind of short, and I was hoping for a little bit more. Uh, the Q&A was quite interesting. I need to go back. There was one I had, I had about 11 questions. I got... Four of them answered. Three of them, three of them I genuinely asked. One of them I got got an answer to indirectly. The first one is about the telematics box module TBM, and I was asking if that was one of the things that FCA adopted from their collaboration with Waymo. And if I remember correctly, the TBM is sort of like a super processor, so it just speeds up uh, processing and and uh, transportation of data. If man. I really hope I have that right, but I got an answer for that question. Unfortunately, I don't remember what it was specifically. So again, I'm going to have to go back and listen to really figure that out. The other question that I had, and for owners who have darts, vipers, 200s, this, this was kind of aimed at you. Oh wait, no. Okay, I have to go a little bit further down. Will it be possible for owners of older FCA vehicles with previous Uconnect systems to retrofit their cars with the latest system? No, you won't be able to do that. And so the reason they were saying that was Uconnect 5 has a lot. There's a lot that changed with Uconnect 5, and it has, it doesn't have autonomy in it, but it has, they kind of future-proofed it to have that capability and 200 Dart, whatever, simply don't have those kinds of systems. And, you know, they change the code, they have cards. Basically, there's so many, while Uconnect 5 is an evolutionary change, it's such an evolutionary change that it's, it's pretty much not possible to retrofit the older cars with it. As soon as I stopped the recording, I found it. So, the all-new Uconnect system takes autonomous driving initiatives into consideration for future products with the addition of a telematics box module or TBM. The TBM assists in quickly moving large amounts of data engineered for the fastest speeds possible. The trusted and secure ecosystem provides an optimal environment for continuous improvement through a built-in cellular Cellular network. I don't think that last part was necessary. But yeah, so the TBM is basically for for autonomous capabilities down the road. Which obviously pretty much none of the current FCA products really have. The next thing I said was, or the next question I had was, which screen orientation is seen as more luxurious and which one is seen as more sporty? Now, I want to preface this by saying this was actually supposed to be a gotcha kind of question. Because by asking this question... And if they gave me a proper answer, which I'll say what their answer was in a minute. If they had said, like, let's say, oh, landscape or square is more sporty. Well, that would mean that more often than not, future Dodge products would get a more horizontally oriented screen. Not big news, but that was the point in me asking that question was to try and get a bit of an insight into future products. And they totally avoided it. Vince, you did a great job at avoiding it. Because what he ba and, Well, to be fair, not avoiding it. Vince didn't avoid it. But he, he managed to avoid the gotcha part of that question because the answer was essentially that landscape is likely going to be more of the premium cars. It'll depend on the interior of those, so there's no hard and fast rule for that because you say luxurious, look at the look at the new DT Ram. That has a portrait style screen. And what he was saying during during the you know during that question was that it really depends on kind of the dash structure and the and the car in question. So some will get landscape, some will get portrait, and I think square is going to be for your lower end models. But there you go. So unfortunately, I couldn't get an answer for you guys there. It'll it'll depend. It, it depends on the car because you again you look at the DT Ram 1500 that has a portrait, despite the fact that landscape typically is seen as more luxurious. So unfortunately, reality kind of screwed me over there. Then the last, well, not the last question, but the last question I got answered 
was what other operating systems did you look at when making Uconnect 5? Were you always going to use an Android based system like they use now? And if not, which ones were you also looking at using? And the short answer was it was always going to be an Android based system. And then I've got quite a few other questions here, so I'm going to try and get an interview in with Vince or Jin later down the road so that I can get those questions answered for you guys as well, considering uh, about UK Uconnect 5. But you know what? I like. I like the Uconnect 5 system. I'm I'm curious how it's going to be. I'm, I want to get my hands on it. But it does seem to be... It definitely seems to be more of an evolution rather rather than a revolution of the entire system. And considering how good Uconnect 4 already is, I think that was the right approach. Let's see, I have a few notes here. Oh, by the way, you can cycle through media presets. I... FM, I'm not sure about AM, I don't remember that one during the meeting. Sirius XM, so on and so forth, on the touchscreen or by using buttons on the steering wheel, which is quite on the steering wheel. If you didn't know, you can create custom pages, like custom home pages in this new Uconnect system. So let's say you start the car up and your home page is the, you know, the media, so the radio, DVD, SD card, that sort of thing, and then your, your HVAC functions. Or you can have navigation, whatever. So you can create up, create up to five of those custom pages. And then lastly, they were saying that redundant controls will always be a thing. So that means your HVAC, your physical HVAC functions, and I think your your physical your physical seek seek buttons for the radio. Which thank God, because having to uh, there was a study I saw the headline on an article. I have to go find it, but they were saying that having all those functions on a touchscreen is actually a lot more distracting than it is helpful. So the fact that they're saying there's always going to be HVAC functions like that is so is that I'm happy for that. I'm very glad that that'll still be a thing in FCA products because I don't as much as Uconnect Five as I love the Uconnect system, I don't want to search through menu on menu on menu on menu for system. I don't even want to have to look. I don't want to have to look to find where where let's say I have a little card for that stuff. Is having the redundant controls is you know for people listening on the podcast who didn't you know who can watch it the you the new uconnect system has an upgraded 50 50k mip chip mip not sure what that means six gigs of ram and up to 64 gigs of flash memory that means the all-new uconnect 5 delivers operating speeds that are five times faster when compared to the previous generation so there you go it's a lot faster it's more user friendly they updated they've updated some of the some of the icons and you can now customize where buttons are on the screen so if you want your wi-fi to be to be where let's say near the clock you just press it and you drag so it's like on a phone where you drag where your apps want to be and you put them in folders and stuff you can act now works a lot like that but anyway that's kind of the gist of it i'm gonna like i said try and get an interview with or an exclusive interview i should say with either vince or Jin to get a few more of my questions answered but I do hope you enjoyed if you're listening on on Spotify or Podbean or anywhere else. Please like, share, and if you can, comment on the episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hitting the little notification bell. That way you're notified every time I upload. If you want to listen to this podcast on the road but don't have or want the Podbean mobile app, well then just boot up Spotify before you go. Type in Cody's Car Conundrum and then choose the episode that you want to listen to. I hope you enjoy. I'll see you all next time.